Lincoln and Kennedy, A Pair to Compare by Jean Beretta. How much could these two presidents have in common? Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. He was a Republican. He was in charge of our country before we had telephones, cars, or light bulbs. When he was elected, there were only 33 states, and our flag had only 33 stars. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was our 35th president. He was a Democrat. During his presidency, 100 years later, America sent a man into space. Kennedy was the first to be elected under our 50-star flag. Lincoln. Both men were named in honor of their grandfathers. Aside from that, they began their lives very differently. Young Abe Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, near Hodgenville, Kentucky, and raised in a one-room log cabin. There were no modern conveniences. Abe lived on the frontier and received less than one year of schooling. He had a passion for learning and borrowed books whenever he could. Kennedy. On May 29, 1917, young John Kennedy was born into the lap of luxury in Brooklyn, Massachusetts. He had everything a 20th century boy could want, except good health. His early years were challenged by whooping cough, measles, and scarlet fever. John attended elite boarding schools and had private tutors at home when he was ill, yet he showed little interest in his studies. Of course, they didn't grow up and immediately become president. They spent a lot of time figuring out who they wanted to be. There was store clerk Lincoln, college Kennedy, postmaster Lincoln, author and Pulitzer Prize winner Kennedy, attorney Lincoln, journalist Kennedy, and Captain Lincoln of the Illinois Militia in the Black Hawk War of 1832. During World War II, Kennedy was also a military leader. When an enemy ship sank his patrol boat, PT-109, Lieutenant Kennedy saved the life of an injured sailor and led his crew on a three-mile swim to safety. Both men were elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, Lincoln in 1846 and Kennedy in 1946. In 1856, Lincoln was nominated to be a vice presidential candidate, but he lost. In 1956, Kennedy was also nominated to be a vice presidential candidate. He lost too. It was a big disappointment for both of them. Lincoln. There was plenty to celebrate in their personal lives. At a local dance in Springfield, Illinois, Lincoln was introduced to a well-educated, charismatic woman named Mary Todd. He said to her, Miss Todd, I want to dance with you in the worst way. And that's exactly what he did. Lincoln loved nothing more than to tell a good story and make people laugh. Mary looked beyond Lincoln's awkward appearance and recognized his great ambition and intellect. Kennedy, at a small dinner party in Washington, D.C., Kennedy met Jacqueline Beauvoir, a smart, ambitious newspaper photographer and journalist. She was engaged to someone else at the time, but not for long. She fell in love with Kennedy's humor, intelligence, and his competitive nature, which was a true Kennedy trait. Lincoln. The men did their best to keep personal struggles and tragedies private. The Lincoln family lost one of their children before the presidency and a second child while in the White House. Lincoln had already lost his sister, brother, and mother. Throughout his adulthood, he often suffered from depression. Kennedy. The Kennedy family also lost one of their children before the presidency and a second child while in the White House. Kennedy lost his brother and sister in separate plane accidents. He lived with a disorder called Addison's disease, which caused weakness and abdominal distress. He also suffered chronic back pain. 
Despite the setbacks, Lincoln's and Kennedy's desire and determination to serve our country remained strong. Lincoln. Lincoln detested slavery. He ran for president against three men, including Stephen A. Douglas and John C. Breckinridge, who wanted slavery to be an option in new states as the country grew. Northern states agreed with Lincoln. Southern states did not. His critics called him a simple-minded gorilla and made fun of his lanky appearance. Kennedy. 100 years later, Jim Crow laws still segregated people based on their race. Descendants of slaves were living without the same rights as white Americans. Kennedy would eventually share Lincoln's vision, equality for all. He ran for president against Richard M. Nixon. Their debates were the first to be televised. Kennedy won that year, but eight years later, Nixon would win and become president. Lincoln. Lincoln was elected president of the United States in 1860. His election was a first of its kind because he was the first president from a newly formed Republican Party. The party's primary goal was to prevent the growth of slavery. Kennedy. Kennedy was elected president in 1960. His election was also a first of its kind. He was the first Catholic president. Many feared that a Catholic president would rely on advice from the Pope, the leader of the Catholic Church, for government decisions. That was not the case. Lincoln. There was not a lot of time for Lincoln to celebrate his election. Because the southern states supported slavery, they decided to split from the north. The United States soon fell apart. Preserving the country became Lincoln's most important concern. The South formed the Confederate States of America and selected Jefferson Davis as its president. Lincoln wanted to reunite the states peacefully, but the Confederates fired the first shot at his Union Army and started the Civil War. Robert E. Lee became the South's greatest general and the North's biggest rival. Kennedy. When Kennedy entered the White House, he believed our country was threatened by the spread of communism around the world. Communist governments do not allow the same freedom and opportunities as a democracy, which is the form of government we practice in the United States of America. Nikita Khrushchev, the communist leader of the Soviet Union, was Kennedy's biggest nemesis. Kennedy felt the need to increase his arsenal of nuclear weapons. So did Khrushchev. This power struggle was called the Cold War. Lincoln. Both presidencies got off to a rough start. For the first two years of the Civil War, Lincoln's Union Army was losing. The war lasted much longer than he ever expected. Lincoln agonized over the casualties on both sides of the battlefield. In his eyes, every soldier was still an American. Kennedy. When communism moved into Cuba, it was too close for comfort. Kennedy approved an invasion of Cuba to overthrow its leader, Fidel Castro. The mission was a complete failure. Castro captured 1,200 men at the Bay of Pigs and remained in power. Lincoln. Lincoln's goal was to reunite the country, but he changed the focus of the war on January 1st, 1863, with the Emancipation Proclamation. It declared freedom for all slaves in Confederate states. Now freed black men could join the Union Army and fight to end slavery. Almost 200,000 black men enlisted by the end of the war. In 1863, Lincoln met with Frederick Douglass, a former slave who became a leader in the movement to end slavery. For two years, Douglass had publicly criticized Lincoln for not freeing the slaves sooner. He now felt the president was truly committed to the cause. Kennedy. In 1963, as black citizens demanded equal rights, they often faced violent protest. Kennedy met with several civil rights leaders, including Martin Luther King Jr., who urged the president to eliminate Jim Crow laws where they still existed. Kennedy went on TV and the radio to propose new civil rights laws that would end discrimination and injustice for all non-white Americans. 
King praised the proposal as the most sweeping and forthright ever presented by an American president. On June 11th, 1963, Kennedy addressed the nation. 100 years of delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their heirs are not fully free. They are not yet freed from the bonds of injustice. This nation will not be fully free until all its citizens are free. Now the time has come for this nation to fulfill its promise. Lincoln. Lincoln found new hope after his Union Army won at the Battle of Gettysburg. His famous Gettysburg Address reminded people why they were fighting. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. These dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Kennedy. In 1962, everything Lincoln fought for almost disappeared during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Khrushchev installed nuclear missiles in Cuba, provoking a confrontation that almost caused a nuclear war. Fortunately, after 13 tense days, Lincoln could report to America that the two leaders had reached a peaceful resolution. Lincoln. After four difficult years, Lincoln was elected to a second term. The Union won the Civil War in 1865. North and South were reunited. He accomplished what he had set out to do. He also persuaded Congress to pass the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, ending slavery throughout the entire country. Kennedy. Kennedy continued what Lincoln started when he presented a long-awaited civil rights bill to Congress that later became the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Revolutionary Act outlawed segregation and discrimination against people based on their race, religion, or gender. Then, after such monumental achievements, these two presidents, who enriched the lives of so many, had their lives tragically cut short in two oddly similar assassinations. Both were shot on a Friday. Lincoln at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. on April 14, 1865, and Kennedy at Dealey Plaza in Dallas, Texas on November 22, 1963. Both men were sitting beside their wives who were not hurt. A second man was injured in the attack on each president. Lincoln was shot in Ford's theater. Kennedy was shot riding in a Lincoln made by the Ford Motor Company. Both assassins used three names. John Wilkes Booth shot Lincoln and Lee Harvey Oswald shot Kennedy. Both assassins were killed before their trials. Both presidents were succeeded by men named Johnson Andrew Johnson was born in 1808. Lyndon B. Johnson was born in 1908. Kennedy's funeral ceremonies were modeled after Lincoln's services. Kennedy is a final resting place in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. It overlooks the Lincoln Memorial. The legacies of President Abraham Lincoln and President John F. Kennedy continue to inspire new generations. What will your legacy be? All right. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thanks for listening.